What is up everybody, it is Og here, back with another video, and in today's video, we're gonna be showing exactly how to keep the Mara slimes. So shout out to Volfury Rex, Corey, and RayQT, who have been theory crafting this for a while on their server, and they were able to figure out a good way to keep all the slimes. They're able to pull off 169 mob count while keeping all the slimes, which is going to give an increased amount of XP. I personally am still working on getting this exactly perfected so I can keep that kind of mob count. I'm getting about 150 or so mobs right now. But once I get this perfected, you should be able to have 169 as a mob count or maybe 170. And so comparing that to the normal 170 pool, that means you're gonna have the same amount of mobs. But the big difference is I'm gonna be keeping the slimes. And since the slimes are elites, they're gonna give more XP than just the other mobs that you would have had, which means that overall, you're gonna be able to increase the XP that you get for your runs, for your individuals that you're boosting, and then in essence, charge more. You'll also be able to make a little bit more extra money through herbalism, but we're gonna be showing that in the video. If you are enjoying these videos, definitely check out the Twitch link down below. Hit that subscribe button down below and stay tuned for more videos. All right, let's jump back to exactly how we do this. Okay, so we're gonna get started here. We're gonna reset our Titan panel and we're gonna get going. So you might notice that I came in through purple side. And so this is gonna be the very first difference is the fact that we're gonna be coming in through purple side. This allows us a couple benefits. One, we can get ghost mushrooms along the way. And two, you don't need the scepter. You can still get to where we're going to be going with the scepter. However, you do not need it. And so it just helps speed up the run a little bit. And if you want to go there, if you're more comfortable with using the scepter, feel free to do that. Perfectly fine. But the goal is that we want to get to the little green slimes. Now, there's basically a theory that the individuals crafted, which is basically that if you keep those slimes, you're going to be able to keep the rest of the Nox slimes, and if you have them for a little bit longer. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna turn on what's called fraps, or frags. So I'm gonna create a new window here, and we're gonna go ahead and turn this onto frags and damage. And what this actually does is it keeps track of the amount of mobs that you kill of a specific type. So let's say, for example, that we killed a snake. It would show one snake. And so what it's gonna be able to show for us is it's going to be able to show how many noxious slimes we're able to kill throughout the run. Now, you might have noticed that I aggroed some mobs. That's perfectly fine. There actually is a reset spot. And so I'll show you guys that real quick. If you aggro mobs on the way, this tree, a certain spot on this tree, is actually a reset spot where you can just jump up onto that tree, reset the mobs, and then keep on going where you're going. So you might be noticing that I'm also grabbing ghost mushrooms along the way. Ghost mushrooms are going to really increase the amount of gold per hour that we're going to be able to get, which is nice for this. It's just kind of like an added benefit, but we're actually we're probably going to be able to get about, you know, 15 to 16 ghost mushrooms per hour. But to reset the mobs, you just jump up into this little crevice right here onto the tree. You can notice that the mobs stop. Once they reset, you're good to go again. But as I said before, we're trying to get right around this bend to the green slimes, and that's where we're going to get started with the pools. Now, what we want to be able to do is we want to pull the green slimes and then jump down over the waterfall and pull the rest of the normal mobs that we do through our normal run. So when I first thought about this, I didn't think that it would be a lot of mobs that we'd be killing. And so I thought that it would be, you know, not great per se, because we just, we wouldn't be able to get as many mobs killed, which means less experience for the boosties. But it turns out that if we kill and we pull the mobs correctly, with the correct tactics, specifically using a Barav peasant collar or some kind of a device like this. You could use the the Novish trinkets or the dragon kin or things like that. You can also use those, or you could try to use the ancient cornerstone Grimar. But if we use this strategy, we should actually be able to pull nearly as many mobs as we would with a normal 170 pool. And so in one of the videos that he showed me, he got 169 mobs. And so if we compare that to 170, basically the same amount of mobs. But the biggest difference is that these are elites that we're going to be killing. And so instead of killing non-elites, we're now killing elites, which means more experience for the boosties. But to start off the pool, we're going to be wanting those guys. We're going to be aggroing these creeping sludges. And we want to let them run a little bit. And so we're not going to be noving them or anything like that. We're going to come over to these creeping sludges on the side here. And we're going to aggro these as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump off. So here we go ahead and aggro these creeping sludges run over to the left side of the waterfall and jump off the waterfall going into the water. You don't exactly have to pull these creeping sludges if you don't want to. I also recommend blinking before you hit the ground. I wasn't really thinking about that while I was going. You don't have to pull those creeping sludges though. They will get auto pulled with the rest. But here we can pull them, get started with our pool, go ahead and Nova the first group of slimes. 
And so we're getting all the standard slimes that we would have gotten. Rank one Frostbolt, rank one Frostbolt this guy. It'll automatically pull this guy, so we don't need to worry about specifically pulling him. We're going to Kona Cold in this group. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark each of these groups. So we're going to Kona Cold these guys. We're going to Fire Blast this guy. We're going to Counterspell this guy. Blink up the side here. Get up to the top. We're going to Nova these guys right here. Fire Blast this guy. Come around the bend. Jump turn Kona Cold. Now here's where it gets a little bit hairy. You might get hit a couple times, but that's fine. We're actually going to pop our Barrage Trinket right now. Aggro up the rest of the mobs, and then blink through right here. <clears throat> you want to make sure you do it a lot cleaner than that, because you could just die. As you see, I'm at 41 life. So we're going to go ahead and Nova. So it is going to take a little bit of practice getting used to that to make sure that you don't die like this. I'm actually kind of thinking that I might die at this point. Oh boy, oh boy. I don't have any health pots. This could be fun, guys. But I'm going to see when I mess up, because I was focusing on <laughs> talking through everything. You can actually die if you aren't too careful with that. Maybe don't pull the last group of green slimes. That might help out a little bit. But you can see that we use the Barab Trinket to actually pull those mobs in the corner. And that allows us to go ahead and... I'm like that here. <clears throat> that allows us to go ahead and get some extra mobs. And it also allows us to make sure that we have our Barab Trinket going after those mobs to keep on hitting them throughout. And so now we should have... Pretty much all these slimes possible. And so we'll go ahead and target this guy at the back. Make sure that we keep track of him to make sure that he comes through. And we'll target this one right here. So now we have some noxious slimes targeted. We're running a little bit slow, but we're going to keep on running as quickly as possible to try to get around the side. Make sure that you try to blink a little bit quicker than that. Obviously, my blink was a little bit slower this time, just because I had to bandage instead of evocate. But we should still be all right to come around the side. Go ahead, frostbolt, frostbolt, and counterspell. Come around the side. You can see the mobs coming up the side right now. Rank one, fire blast that guy. And now we're going to do the normal roundabout strat. So the idea here is that we're going to keep the same exact roundabout strat as before, just trying to make sure that we are pulling as many mobs as possible and hopefully being able to keep the slimes and get some extra XP for everybody. Nova, these guys, as you come around the corner, we've now aggroed the stealth guy, which is nice, getting a little bit of mana back with resists. I actually only have three points right now into magic absorption, so I'm not going to get as much mana back as normal. So I might go ahead and use Evocate to my advantage here and try to get back some mana with Evocate. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm also farming ZG at the same time. And so in order to farm ZG and Mara, you can kind of use this spec to do both. So what we do is we go down to the Arcane Tree, we get two out of Arcane subtly normally. We get five Arcane Concentration for clear casting procs while we're on the bridge. And then we get three into magic absorption to be able to do farms like this or farms like Mara, things like that. From there, we go over into the Frost Tree, and we do our normal Frost build, picking up Shatter and everything like that. So here, same as always, as they come around the bend, I didn't mean to Arcane Explosion there. Go ahead and rank one Blizzard the mobs as they run up the side. And then we're going to Counterspell this guy pull, to pull him. Reapply Ice Barrier. You're going to wait until the mobs get around to the side, kind of group up there, and we're going to go ahead and Nova. Come around the side. What you're going to notice is that I did get a clear casting proc. You never want to actually use your clear casting procs for max rank Blizzard. Even though you have the opportunity to cast a max rank Blizzard, what that's going to do is it's going to actually chunk down these mobs' health, like the poison sprites and things like that, the ones that are giving you mana. And they're actually going to start running slower and not be able to reach you during the kill phase. Also, if you get your Blizzard interrupted, don't worry about that here. You could try to cast another one, but sometimes you're going to have an issue if you cast another one where the mobs in the front won't get slowed enough. So if you do get interrupted, just make sure you do it really quick. Jump down. Once you're done with that, blink. Get around the side just like a normal pool. We're going to go into the corner. We're going to counter spell the mob in the corner. Rank one Arcane Explosion to pull these two mobs right there. So we rank one Frostbolt. Arcane Explosion. Counter spell the mob in the corner. Now what we want to do is we actually want to let these two Stompers hit us. And what that's going to do is it's apply Frost Armor or Ice Armor to them. Jump around the side and Nova. And now we blink. So we waited to blink so that what ends up happening is those mobs get slowed and they're not coming around the corner prematurely compared to the rest of the mobs. But now we're able to go ahead and blizzard right here in the corner. We can go ahead and get both those mobs slowed. I didn't place it perfectly there, and so some of the mobs on the right actually didn't get slowed, but that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and rank one, fire blast that mob on the right to get him pulled, and then we're going to counterspell this group in the corner. So this is definitely a little bit of a sloppier run, I would say, but overall we're still going to be able to accomplish the same exact goal. So we have about 32% health. And so what we're thinking about here is making sure we reapply damage magic to not take as much damage. 
but then we want to make sure that we hopefully do not get corruption stacks right before we jump off this edge. If we don't get corruption stacks, we can go ahead and get off a full heavy rune cloth bandage and we'll be able to heal up to full without any problem. Blink ahead here just to stay, you know, a good distance away from the mobs. They're going to catch up a little bit by just taking perfect pathing. And so then we're going to come over on the side, get to our normal rank one blizzard spot and get ready to blizzard them down. Make sure you run up this route. This route you can actually run up instead of running around and it saves you some time. And then rank run blizzard right here on the corner. Mobs have a little bit of trouble with going around a corner and they take a little bit longer. So we're able to get off more of a blizzard. Watch the blizzard on the very first mob when it's about to fall off. And then we counterspell this group in the corner, allowing us to pull them. Jump up on the side, rank one fire blast. We're going to come around this side and aggro these two mobs that are south right here. And then we're going to jump in Nova to get the mobs that are right on top of us off of us. Blink ahead just to create some spatial distance. Rank one fire blast, rank one cone of cold. And now we're just running to jump off here and letting the mobs get as far as we can towards us now. Jump off here. We got mage armor up. I'm going to go ahead and bandage. And then we'll blink at the end of the bandage to get back to the spot over here. So bandage all the way back up to full so the health wasn't an issue. I'm going to use my small mana pot right here just because I'm not going to be giving as much mana back through clear casting. But we can try to extend them right here to try to get as much mana back as possible. Rank 1 Blizzard. You can see that a lot of them ran through. That's perfectly fine. You can just go ahead and Nova the mobs in the front. If there are more mobs outside of that, you could jump turn Cone of Colds or just blink ahead in the mobs and you're going to be fine. <clears throat> go ahead and reapply Ice Barrier. Now that we have Mage Armor on, we're going to be taking less damage and getting hit with all those Mage abilities a lot less. Try to get these mobs to stack as much as possible by running into the corner, blinking across, and jumping down the platform here. Now, a lot of them did run through the blizzard, so they're not going to be as perfectly stacked as normal, but they're going to be pretty darn close. And so it's plenty stacked. We're able to go around the side and get ready to go through the kill phase. Hopefully you have a lot more mana than this. I recommend maybe going like four and four with clear casting and magic absorption, just because this is going to be slightly difficult with three magic absorption, just because you don't have as much mana and also don't have mana pots. So I'm going to try to regen as much mana as I can, but we can get to the corner and we can get them killed. We see that we have one kill on a snake, but outside of that, we're going to have a fresh kill count and everything like that. So we're going to be able to see exactly how many kills that we get with this pool, hopefully to be able to compare it appropriately to the standard pool to see which is going to be better. Get into our spot, get ready for the pre-blizz. You want to be casting blizzard one second before the mobs get there. Cast it one second before they get there here. Go ahead and get them all grouped up in the corner. You can see them running back and forth. They're all grouped. Once they're all grouped, we're going to step to the left and focus on the front mob. You always blizzard right on the front mob. You can see that the front mob is right in the middle of my blizzard, and that's where I want to focus my blizzard. When there's a new front mob, you just update, and you just shift it. What this allows you to do is it allows the mobs in the back, if they're too far away, to catch up to the mobs in the front and get caught in the blizzard. When you're ready, you jump down, reapply Ice Barrier on your way down, and you literally just step off this platform, and you'll come onto this totem, and then you do two blizzards while you're on the bottom. My general rule of thumb is two on the bottom, one on the top. So you do two blizzards while you're on the bottom on the totem. And then once you jump back up, you do one blizzard to get them back into their spot. So here we got one blizzard coming back up. They're going to get back to the middle. Now they are a little bit further behind than normal. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and do two blizzards just because they are a little bit further behind. You can see the mana issues that I was talking about potentially having with only having three ranks into magic absorption. So maybe you should get the extra magic absorption. But we can see here that we're actually able to get down the mobs anyways. And able to get the kills. So as far as Noxious Slimes, we were able to kill 19 Noxious Slimes, but we did only get 146 as a kill count. And so there is some practice to do here. Practice this strat and see if you can get this kill count up because with 146 kill count, it's probably not going to be worth it. But if you are able to pull off that 169 kill count that the other guy said, I'm not sure where the difference is honestly coming from at this point, then you can go ahead and get a few more mobs. Maybe there's four mobs in here that we aren't counting in the kill count because we leave them up just as like a mana resource. So I guess that could be about 150. We're still missing about 19 mobs somewhere. But if you get a lot more noxious slimes, what that's gonna allow you to do is actually get more XP for your group, if you're able to keep about the same number. And then more XP can then allow you to charge a little bit more. You're also able to pick up ghost mushrooms along the way to get some extra gold. And so this is gonna be definitely a viable strat if you don't have the scepter, if you just wanna switch it up, if you don't wanna get the boars, you're having trouble with the boars or something like that, you can definitely switch up to this strat. I recommend having bear off or some kind of trinket to be able to pull the extra mobs. You can pull them without having bear off, but then you're going to be, you know, just making it a lot more risky because you're running around the side 
trying to pull them standard with a standard pool rather than optimizing it with some other mob to pull them. And you're just going to run the risk that, you know, my extra mobs are going to hit you and it just could be a bad day. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. Recommend getting the bear op trinket. Get the bear op trinket. It's easy. You just go over to, you know, Western Plague Lands. You do the quest out there to go through Scalo, get all the books from Scalo. So just run a Scalo Mance group just to pick up all the, all the books in there, turn it in and then go kill one elite. And you're going to be able to good to go and get the bear op trinket. So here we are running through and doing the loop. You can see that the total time is about 14 minutes, 18 seconds. And so this actually lines up perfectly with about a 15 minute reset. So once we get this done, we're able to just run out, reset and run right back into purple. That's another slight benefit. So it can time out perfectly at the four runs per hour, which is the maximum amount of runs per hour that you can do. So it's a pretty good option, especially if you're pushing instance cap. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.